Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the beta for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today, we plunge the depths of what humanity is capable of, as we see what kind of sewage runs beneath this hive of scum and villainy. That is to say, we're setting our sights on the sewers beneath the cultist hideout we cleared out last time around. I'm like 90% sure this is just optional content. We have a pretty clearly marked exit grid up top, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. Let's get in there. Victory awaits. Oh, hello there. Under Hive Rabble. Have mercy. I've already been robbed blind. Yes, of course, Rabble Shooter. I'm certain you're a trustworthy and gentle soul. The voices belonging to the many residents of the lower levels merge into a single humming noise, unnerving and oppressive, much like the surrounding catacombs. Over. You feel a slight prickling sensation at the back of your head. The barrier between the worlds has grown so thin here that you can feel a breeze coming from the other side. Ah, the winds of change. Yes, that's, um, that's probably fine. First I hear some wicked laughter. Now I'm seeing higher-ups in our dump. Must be going mad. Uh, I'm sure that's fine too. None shall stand in my way. I barely have anything left, but I'll give it all to you. Just please, don't kill me. Observation report on Heinrichs van Kalox. The unit's professional skills make him a suitable candidate for data interrogator servo skull conversion. I am proposing... Uh, Pascal, are you feeling okay? We haven't actually met Heinrichs just yet. But I mean, I guess it is always important to plan ahead. I imagine had we come here sooner, we would have met Heinrichs shortly after landing. A toxic flow of murky liquid comes down from the higher levels via ancient, rusted pipes. Lovely. And we had some loot over here. Let's go snag that. Also, given the names these guys are sporting, I think it's pretty obvious we're going to end up fighting them. It's just a matter of time, especially with the, uh, the warp phenomena there. They're really kind of stressing here. This filthy excuse for a table is smeared with someone's dinner, consisting of algae and corpse starch. I won't tolerate weakness. Yum. That wasn't so difficult. Under the layer of soot and grime, you notice an unholy symbol scratched into the wall. And one look at it is enough to make you nauseous. Someone is watching you. Yeah, that sounds about right. We are very clearly walking into a fairly elaborate trap here. Something of interest. The whispers hold me home. You hear shrill, baleful giggling coming from behind you, and it's getting louder. But there's no one there. Oh, we've got a trap panel, but the trap appears to be in the next time zone, so um, I guess we'll just... Oh, container too, nice. Containers loaded with belly churn wheels. Uh, I'm sure that's something horrific, but at the same time, I can't help but feel like it's one of those exercise devices you buy off a late night infomercial. I spoke to Mistress Tullaman recently. Don't you think you're taking advantage of the Lord Captain's hospitality, Van Kalox? Um... Are you guys okay? I mean, if this is all part of an elaborate setup to reveal that Heinrichs was just a... 
a figment of our collective fevered imaginings throughout the entire alpha, then, you know, respect. But somehow I, I don't feel like that's what we're going for. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, I can't believe they dusted off Mac tonight. We're up against a straight-up old-school McDonald's mascot here. Yeah, he's a little different when you meet him in person. There's a reason they retired him. I don't suppose you guys are going to actually help me with this? Because you certainly seem like you're still marked as neutral. We'll just stop right under the assumption that they will not be on our side. Which doesn't necessarily mean hostile, but at the very least it does mean we have to be careful with collateral damage. But we also need to be ready in case of a sudden but inevitable betrayal. Rip and tear. Oof. Okay. Not great. Not terrible. Let's empty the rest of the mag. Wow, he, he is, uh... Oh my goodness. Okay, so it turns out that, yes, these guys are hostile. Um, also, he shoots giant exploding purple fireballs. So, you know, something to bear in mind, I suppose, when it comes to squad placement. Let's see how he fares against a full-on bolt gun. Got some collateral there. That's something at least. I'll do it. But yeah, he's durable and deadly. We've got an actual fight here. Let's buy ourselves some breathing room. Nicely done, Pascal. Looks like we might actually have to uh, leverage the adepts this time around. That's a nice change of pace. I mean, look, adepts do have their uses. The problem is that nine times out of ten in this game, you're just up against a bunch of expendable mooks. Dudes who go down in a single attack or a single burst. So, generally speaking, it's just not worth the time it takes to set up multi-round damage buffs or, or enemy debuffs. Because they're just going to be dead the second you attack them anyway. This, however, may be an exception. So buff and debuff we shall. Hopefully it actually makes a difference. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Let's keep clearing these mooks. The demon's more dangerous, but best to keep these guys off our back line. Defense is up. Forewarned is forearmed. Anything is. Was was that you? Or on it. Hmm. Not gonna lie, I was kind of expecting more from that. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. But she is just tier one. At your back and forth. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. We've got a multi-stage fight. Unexpected. We've got another batch of rabble bearing down on us, but let's mop these guys up first. Victory is in one fewer target. At your beck and call. Interesting. It does look like the uh, the neutral ones are trying to fight back. For all the good it'll do them anyway. From what we're seeing here, they're all just lunatics in the making. Only a matter of time before they're washed away by the Luna Sea. Not the worst hit we've taken, but probably not a great idea to get that close to it. It's cool. We'll have Brett fall back on his next action. Faith without deeds is worthless. That is for the weak. Eradicated. Mooks are clear. Time for this fight to be abridged. Come on, Pascal, you gotta work with me here, buddy. up Rhett. If I may. We could go for the ultimate. Give him an extra turn. In the name of House Orsini, I shall prevail. All right, Rhett, let's get you disengaged. Pistols tapped. Suits my purpose. Me was your nice. Oh, too easy. Nothing I can't do. Ah, that's fine. Go ahead and try that again. And off he goes. And off they go. Poor guys. But we do still have a couple of friendlies at least. For as long as they last. Oh, we still have this guy behind us. Um. Hi. What is this foreboding? That is not my Was he just opinion. standing there this whole time? That's awkward. Anything else? Let's see if we can actually get some help from the locals. My place is at the before it's too late. It will be done. Here we go. 
Rabble on rabble violence. You hate to say it. All right, let's push up. We'll pick shots where we can. Shouldn't be that tough. Most of us have rifles. Yowzers. Though, I mean, he's taking out his own guys too, so we'll, we'll take it. As the Emperor commands, I, I mean, obviously, this whole situation sucks for the locals. They, uh, they lose pretty much no matter how this goes down. But that's just life in 40k, I suppose. Life sucks, and then you die. And honestly, even the name characters aren't an exception to that. I mean, look at the Emperor. That's just the uh, the nature of these grimdark settings. still on cooldown, so yeah, let's go Argenta. Oh, and we've got momentum again. Not that there's really much in the way of mooks left for us to use it on. Time for the Mac attack. As the Emperor commands, I act. Doubt is for the weak. This is why I was chosen. We've really got to work on that aim, sister. There is movement in the Empyrean. I mean, we're still doing okay here. This guy did throw me for a bit of a loop early on, but now the fight's kind of just become bog standard. He's tougher than most, but he's not exactly wearing us down. Yeah, I'd say so. At your back and call. There we go. Oh. And there they go. Man, I almost feel bad for those guys. The poor faceless rabble. I guess they really were here just to suffer. Okay, let's wrap this up. In fact, maybe if we can take out that Herald, we can actually save a few of these sorry, sad sacks. Ah, 
nice, nice. Pour it on. Should we? No, no, I, I should give him a chance. Oh, so close. Argenta. I don't suppose you can pick that thing off from here. I refuse. I'll do it. As the Emperor commands, each strike is a prayer. Nicely done. And, you know, we tried with these guys, but uh, I guess the rabble's got to go. A sad but not unexpected end, given the setting. Not enough. Victory is imminent. One you and we're done. Which nets us a level up. Not too shabby. Though I will say I'm still not particularly impressed with adepts. I mean, this victory was in spite of having two adepts, not because we had two adepts. Their damage boost is just, I mean, ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, it feels kind of trivial against tougher foes like that. I mean, even against the weaker foes, they were struggling. Though, in part, I think that's because they, they hard-capped Idira's damage output by gating higher psychic tiers behind level caps. And then Pascal is just kind of all over the place. I mean, he can, he can contribute. He's decent with the halberd. He's decent with the sniper rifle. But it's still just a single attack. And even with study, you know, at best, he's going to kill a single guy per turn. Barring, barring a halberd broad swipe or something. So nothing from the Herald itself. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we got a level up, which is nice, but as far as I can tell, there was no unique loot in the offing there. Just a big pile of vendor trash. Given how elaborate that fight was, that is unexpected. I would have expected uh, a more noteworthy prize. Humiliating them at every step. For talent, um, you know, this is the third or fourth time we've run dry on our Ripper and just haven't had time to reload it, so... You know what? Let's go ahead and bite the bullet. We'll grab Rapid Reload. In fact, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and grab that for him and for Argenta both, since they both could obviously make good use of it. 
And then we'll have them both crank up their ballistic skill too. As we uh, saw during this fight, we've still got a ways to go before we can reliably land hits. And then same thing for Argenta. I am regretting taking that grenade perk for her. It just doesn't work the way I thought it would. And grenades, again, are generally lackluster as well. But it is what it is. You know, that's what the alpha and beta runs are for. So we can narrow down what works and what doesn't, at least for our personal preferred play styles. Speaking of which, I think it's about time we really ramped up Abelard's mobility. We'll grab ramming speed this level, but impetus is next on the list. I feel like those two go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds pretty solid. And we'll bump up his weapon skill as well. Round that out to 50. Which brings us to the Adepts. Oh, but they get skills. Which means, of course, Adira will keep cranking up Warplore. And this will actually put her over 100, which I believe is as high as you can take it. Back in the Alpha, you could no longer increase the skill once it was past 100. But I guess we'll find out. And then we also get a characteristic. I guess we'll go ahead and crank up her intelligence, why not? But we'll probably leave it at 40 and just do willpower from here on out. And then for Pascal, he's still got his two primaries locked out. So we cannot increase those. Which I guess means we're going with our tertiary, Medicae. And then this one's much more of a no-brainer. We'll go ahead and grab Intelligence. Which just leaves Cassia, our leader. She also gets a skill and a characteristic, and we cannot boost her Persuasion. So we'll go with her secondary, which is Commerce. Not that I really see it coming up much at this point. And likewise, we cannot boost her Fellowship. So, willpower it is. Oh, there's perception. It's all the way down at the bottom. But I already clicked willpower, so we'll just stick with that. Honestly, at this point, we're so close to the end of the alpha, or at least the end of Act 1, that I imagine it won't make a huge difference. And I guess we're done here, so... Let's head back up top. As uh, as I recall, we've pretty much cleared the entire surface level except for that one ambush tucked into like the corner of the market. And uh, as we discovered last time around, we should have an exit that brings us up right behind those guys. So we'll pop up, catch them by surprise. And then push on to the next area. Get one step closer to actually meeting this mysterious governor and the uh, potentially imaginary Heinrex. I won't heed your cries of oh, mercy. wow. Uh, Show them no mercy. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah, we're, we're kind of behind them. We're behind some of them. Not gonna lie, I was not expecting that to put us right in the middle of their group. But, uh, I... I suppose they probably weren't expecting it either, so... I suppose that still works to our advantage. Let's burn them down. I'll do it. That's one down. Who's next? Okay, let's go for the isolated one. Don't want to risk friendly fire if we don't have to. Nice. Foreboding, forewarned. Was was that you? Or anything is?
Nothing to shout about. But of course. Oh, uh... <laughs> I've got to say, I question your tactics, but given the name of that move, I guess, um... Well, it does say it's a desperate measure right there. Perhaps a bit too desperate to really help these guys out. That said, this is all kinds of sad. Let's wrap this up. Rip. Nothing I can't do. I shall not fear. Already done. Nothing of value has been lost. Torn. A tactically sound approach. And ablated. I took care of this one. And that's that. Ambush. Ambushed. I guess we're ambush whackers. Actually, that, that sounds kind of uh, iffy. We'll just take our loot and be on our way. Don't mind me. A powerful explosion destroyed a large part of the bridge, both its top and below. Could someone still be alive down there? Uh, based on... What we just did down there, I'm going to say no. Thank you, Red. Let's go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So we basically got nothing for that giant demon fight. And we got two unique items for knocking out Baby's first ambush. Warworld Mesh Vest. Well, that's just a straight upgrade. More armor and more parry. This, though, I am less certain about because while it does have higher damage and penetration, unless that's a typo, it seems to come at the trade-off of losing your parry bonus and debuff on hit. And while I don't mind losing the debuff... Losing that plus 10 to parry is pretty rough. That's fine, though. The uh, mesh vest is already a pretty big step up for Abelard. Makes our tank even tankier. Which is always a welcome get. None shall stand in my way. Yikes. Yeah, this place has seen better days. From your vantage point, it does not seem like this slavish mansion has been damaged by explosions. Yet, you cannot enter. Something is blocking the entrance from the inside. Really? Victory awaits! Interesting. We clearly have not seen any other access points. Nothing below, nothing in walking around it. We've cleared the rest of the map. I wonder if that's another thing that would have changed had we come here earlier. Something to explore in the full launch build, perhaps. Shrieking heart of a heretic. Guys, we've been over this. You really can't store those at room temperature. You gotta refrigerate. We also have one errant bit of loot over here. Let's go grab that, and I think we're done here. Okay, this star has been thoroughly fared. Unless I'm missing something, I believe we are ready to move on. Yeah, still no signs of Heinrichs. No signs of the governor, obviously.
Nothing here we can really act on. We did find the Vox they captured, but we couldn't do anything with it. Though I suppose we could try going back to the starport to report that we recaptured it. Or that it was happening in the first place. I mean, I guess we could talk to um, that comms guy as well. Let him know we shut down the AA gun. I'll, uh, I'll try that off screen first. I don't want to waste time if it turns out that there's no new dialogue options. All right, let's get the lay of the land, see what we're dealing with here. Serve the Emperor in your heart and your deeds when you join the ranks of his illustrious army, the Astra Militarum. Pass. I won't tolerate weakness. Fight heresy. Serve the higher purpose. Safeguard humanity's dominance. Yeah, that's going to be a note for me, dog. None shall stand in my way. Oh, here we go. A fanatical old man and a rebel troop holding a bunch of random citizens Victory captive. Awaits. Join the service at the nearest Astra Militarum mobile conscription center in your hive. All right, let's do this. Some ten people, children among them, are huddled together in fear. You see that half of them have black holes where their eyes used to be. Some keep a gloomy silence. Others are wailing. Several armed insurgents are carefully watching over the terrified hostages, snapping every now and then at someone who's winced too sharply or is crying too loudly. Come to your senses, Harold. Look what you're doing to your own family! A woman of about 60, gray-haired but still firm of limb, is kneeling before a stocky man with a thick, pure white beard, stretching her arms toward him. Take pity on us! Let us go! Stop talking and stop refusing to be saved! Our children have gained true sight while you still believe the lie! Upon seeing you, the man points his weapon at you. Other insurgents do the same. Who are you, and why are you here? No, you tell me. Who are you, and what are you doing to these poor unfortunate souls? I am Senior. My former name, Harold, is meaningless now. I am a father leading his family to deliverance from woes. To salvation. Aurora has opened my eyes to the truth. And my children will see it. Harold, spare us. Spare your children. Okay. I think it's pretty clear we're riding out the Benevolentia angle this time around. But, um, it couldn't hurt to gather some intel first. So all these people are your family? All of my natural and adopted children are here. I raised them all as my own. And now I must protect them. Help them see. What exactly are you trying to save them from? And at whose instigation? At Aurora's behest. Aurora is a great prophet and a great warrior. His face is hidden, but his gaze pierces the veil of time and sees into the future. I always knew they were hiding the truth from us, and my hopes have been fulfilled. A prophet has come to Rike at my Norris and opened our eyes. The end of the world is coming, the final dawn. And only those who accept Aurora's truth will survive it. Yes, I'm going to stop you right there. What you are doing is no salvation. Stop taking your fear out on these innocents. It will neither ease your suffering nor rid you of your fears. But all I wanted was to save... I... 
The man drops his weapon and covers his face with his hands in desperation. You hear several short sobs. There's no washing the blood from your hands, but you could at least let us go, Harold. The ones you haven't disfigured yet. The old man gestures to the other insurgents, who lower their weapons. Then he shifts his gaze to you, trying to hold back tears. What happens to us now? I'm not gonna lie, man, I, I really feel like I should kill you for blinding half these poor folks, but... Again... Gotta commit to the bit. The more you stack one alignment, the more potent it becomes for solving future interactions. So, against my better judgment. Your family may go, and so may you. But make sure I don't ever see you again. The hostages begin to leave. Soon the group disappears behind one of the bends. The old man looks away from them and walks in the opposite direction. His shoulders shake with sobs every now and then. I suppose he'll at least get to live with his grief. That's punishment of a sort. Though, yeah, I mean, uh, that whole bit about him blinding half of his children before we got here, that that's pretty tough to stomach, you know. Definitely the sort of thing, under normal circumstances, I think I would have punished him for. But again, Grimdark Universe, there are no happy endings here, especially when we show up late for the party as we did. I have to imagine, had we shown up sooner, things wouldn't have quite gotten so far along. That said, given the circumstances, I feel like we did the best we were able. And I feel like this does bring us to a good stopping point. We're just past time, and I feel like we're not too far off now from where we need to be. I have to imagine the governor somewhere around here. Heinrichs, too. So, we'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping. And uh, run back to the starport real quick, just to make sure we're not missing anything with um, the folks back there. And we will pick up here next time. As we arrive at our destination and hopefully find someone who can point us towards this Aurora fellow. That sounds like someone I would very much like to have words with. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Eloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dragon, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Treme, Kazor, Mark GMs, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.